Hey guys, it's JT Tran, uh, America's number one Asian dating coach. This is my first Facebook Live event. So, uh, I don't really know how this works. I'm just checking this out. So, let me know how it's going. Uh, I, I tried to do it through the ABC's of Retraction fan page, but maybe I need to do it, uh, let's see. Hey Chuck, how's it going? Uh, did you go find this through the ABC's fan page or my profile? Let me know if you can hear me. Like, type, like, yes or no if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Hey, <laughs> all the way from London. How's it going, I see. So, this is my first time in Facebook Live, so... If there are any technical difficulties, all right, just blame my newbiness. Let me know. Can you hear me? Just type yes, then. Awesome, awesome. So I'm actually going to be joined by a long-term student. He's running late. I was, like, waiting for him, but he's stuck in traffic. But hopefully he'll be able to pop in real quick. Um, so a bunch of guys sent me some questions. I'm just going to read off a couple, and I'm going to try to answer as many as I can, but before I do that, I want to give you guys a little bit of, of background about me, for those of you who are new and haven't really heard about me before, right? Obviously, my name is JT Tran, and I was a late bloomer, like many Asian Americans. I didn't kiss my first girl until the age of 20, and she actually chose me, right? And what ended up happening was I, you know, it was a, a sophomore in college, and she was a freshman, and we're all kind of like sitting around in this room, and I walk in, and I see all my friends, and they're like, hey, 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 right? And I'm like really excited, and I, I'm greeting all my friends, and I see this really cute girl, like five foot nine, blonde, you know, pretty girl, and I just kind of like ignore her, like, yeah, whoever, whatever. And later on, like, she started um, hitting on me. Like, I didn't really realize what was happening until one day, one night, she, like, stayed over. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, finally, someone's going to touch my penis, right? And I asked her, once we started dating, what attracted, like, me to her, right? Because it was, like, completely lucky. She had to beat me over the head with it. And... She told me that it was because, like, the moment I walked in, I lit up the room, right? And, you know, I was, you know, kind of popular because I was, like, you know, greeting everybody. And then I, like, ignored her, right? And, she, you know, this was an engineering college where there's, like, ten guys for every one girl. And in the back of her mind, she's wondering, like, how did this guy get off, like, you know, ignoring me when, you know, it was, like, her first week on campus and, like, everyone's, like, chasing her. And here's the thing. It was completely by accident, all right? I wasn't intending to do any of that. It just happened to be that I accidentally did it and that, that created this attraction and this interest. You know, the concept of emotions are contagious. Me coming in really good energy and, and smiling and having fun. The concept of social proof, right? Like me knowing everybody. And, you know, the concept of like ignoring her and not being desperate, right? Not like pursuing and chasing her. And that's, those are pick up tactics. But really all they are is like applied psychology. And, and that's what all pick up is. Right? It is just something that we've codified in a way to teach, right? At least good pickup is, right? Where these are based on actual, like, real principles of psychology and confidence and attraction um, based off of what can be empirically shown and studied and actually repeated, right? Repeated for multiple people, uh, regardless of your background, race, height as opposed to being like a tactic that only one particular person can do because he's like six foot tall and, and good looking. Um, anyways, that's, that's my background. And the reason I bring this up is because you guys who are wanting to learn just dating, pickup psychology, whatever you want to call it, just understand that these are universal principles, regardless of what you label it, right? Um, and there's like, should be no shame in your game, so to speak, because we're all here to improve ourselves, 
and I have students that want to get laid, one student, you know, get girlfriend, and other students want to get married, all right? So I'm just here to help you guys achieve that goal. So let's get to the questions, all right? Enough about me. Let's talk about you guys. Um, first question is from Primus, all right? Thanks, Primus. He says, he asks, what does it mean to have self-confidence? Like, what is self-confidence? All right. Um... This is a question that, that's universal, and it's, the answer is always universally like despised by the guys that don't have confidence, because it comes in either the short answer or the long answer. And the meaning of it is dependent upon where you're at in life, right? Because like the short answer, what is the typical short answer of, of confidence, right? Being yourself which is completely 100% true, right? Be yourself is a completely accurate, true answer to confidence. But what happens if you're not successful? What happens if you're someone that is not already, like, quote, quote, confident and sure of themselves and sure in their place in society and dating and just happy, right? That's where the long answer comes in, and the idea is, like, being your best self. If you're someone that is young and has you haven't really found yourself, right, or you're just dissatisfied, you know, you being yourself is, you know, it's not about simply being who you are currently, but being your best self, being the person that you are meant to be, that you want to be, the, the person that, you know, what kind of man do I need to be to get the kind of experiences and live this kind of life that I want. So, to me, confidence is a process. It's a journey. It's an constant evolution like to this day I'm always learning you know I, I took like an emotional intelligence class you know last year as well as public speaking business I'm always trying right and you know confidence whether it's that sort of emotional confidence and not only being happy with yourself but also being more long-term fulfilled right that's a little bit more abstract a bit more emotional but it's also where you are you have confidence in your skill, right? It's like riding a bicycle. Like, if you've never ridden it, and maybe, sure, you watch a couple of videos and you feel confident, but the reality is you don't actually have that practical knowledge. There's a certain amount of, like, you know, practicality that has to meet the actual meta abstract. Otherwise, just being emotionally confident, right, without the actual game plan and the practical knowledge just means that you're delusional, right? You're just delusionally happy where, yeah, sure, sometimes ignorance is bliss, but the reality, I think, is like if you can marry that too, um, where you have that emotional happiness and fulfillment, but also the actual practical knowledge and marry that. And again, that's at the ABCs where we teach in a holistic way where, you know, we do talk about inner game, outer game, and verbal game. So that to me is confidence. Right? It's a process, it's a journey, and it's a constant evolution of yourself because, you know, your definition of confidence is, is going to be dependent upon where you are in life. Okay, maybe a little bit convoluted answer. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was that a, a, a pretty in-depth answer? Did that, did that help out? Just type in. Um, so, how do you, Keith asks, how do I approach a girl if it's really, like, loud and I don't want to be seen as creepy? Okay. Great answer. Great question. Um, this obviously comes up all the time in a bar or a club setting. Um, so, if you're at a bar and the music is, like, really thumping, then you want to uh, come in with really strong body language, right? Because the human eye is going to detect motion, right? You don't want to sneak up on her. You don't want to kind of like, you know, there's that classic indirect body language of like, hey, over here. But that can start a person. When you're at like this club or bar setting, which really loud, what I like to do, what I, I teach my students, is use the keno term, right? This is the idea of like going up to the person and just getting their attention. You're not trying to cop a feel or anything like that. You're just getting her attention, just touch, turn, release. And that's completely, like, acceptable in a nightlife environment, right? Again, all you're doing is just getting our attention, turn, and big smile. And here's the thing. If you don't smile and make good eye contact, it will definitely 
look and feel fucking creepy to her, okay? So, you know, you use a keynote, sir, but it must always be followed up with a smile. Now, what happens if you're coming from the front, like front, front 180? Well, you know, go in with like big opening arms, okay? The idea is like, hey, and they show psychologically, hey, all right, I've got some guests. All right, you can hear Blondie. Yeah, come on in. All right. So, this is the guy that made me late. Here he goes, Sebastian. <laughs> guys. Sorry Yo. Um, so, I was just answering how to approach in a really loud club or bar and not appear, like, creepy. So, I talked about, like, the keynote turn. I talked about, like, opening arms. And he, 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 you work at clubs now, right? Yes, I do. So, any new strategies that you come up with trying to get a girl's attention without being creepy? Um, the biggest one is uh, your facial expression. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a uh, smile. Um, big, have like big um, body language. Like for example, um, using your arms a lot to talk. Um, also, at the end of the day, it's just a voice projection. Um, as loud as the music is, you can still use your voice. So that's something to practice. Um, working at a club, that's what I always do, like practice speaking from the diaphragm. Um, that helps big time. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All right. Did that answer your questions? Just, just go ahead and type in, uh, hit the likes, hit the, the love buttons, if you will. Um, I'm going to hit some more questions. Oh, and be sure to stay to the very end. I'm going to give out a little kind of cool freebie bonus. All right, guys. Again, this is JT Tran from the ABCs of Attraction, America's number one Asian dating coach, joined by former long-term student Sebastian, um, who is also like known as Gunner and the guy that at one point you were juggling like six girlfriends. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You're that's not. Are you crazy. doing? You're not doing it no, now. No, not anymore. <laughs> Too much work. But right. It's doable. I mean, it's very doable. Yeah. I, you know what? My max was like three, and here. I mean, they all knew each other. We're not like talking about like cheating or anything like that. Like, quite frankly, a girl can like Google or YouTube my name and know who I am, right? But it is just a matter of just juggling and, and like the logistics of it. Like, yeah. how did you? <laughs> I can handle that. Uh, uh, for me, so number one, I knew if I, uh, if, what do you call it, if I saw them every day, one per day, it just wouldn't work because I, I also have to juggle work, I got to juggle my business at the club, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to have them all sit down together and just have them introduce each other and I literally had I literally had them all do connecting exercises exercises to actually get to know one another better not just on a surface level but also on an intimate and emotional level because the last thing I want to do is create je jealousy hatred vengeance gossip all that stuff so I just had them all get along with each other um, wow. Yeah, it was a <laughs> you do lot like, of like, like a group date, but yeah. like group therapy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. And it was so funny. So I literally had them go, um, hey, Jenna, uh, go, like literally I had them sit in a circle and introduce themselves. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. And that's, that's how I got them to uh, uh, I was just yeah. saying, it's almost like you're taking a lesson from Jeff Kahn. Jeff Kahn is <laughs> yeah. another certified coach. Yeah. He's like the, the harem like, expert, but uh, <laughs> cool, cool. I mean, props to you, but for me, like, you know, maybe it's because I'm just older, but like three is like the max after that. I was like, oh, it's, it's too much. It's yeah. too much work. Yeah. Anyways, um, how did it, how to handle a, a major heartbreak? Uh, you want to you wanna <laughs> talk about that or is it a little bit yeah. too soon? No, that's okay. Uh, I actually uh, just went through a heartbreak myself recently. Yeah. Uh, a couple months ago, I my last girlfriend, uh, she's British. I met her in London. A um, couple things for a heartbreak. Uh, number one, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Know that it's only temporary, and that your it it doesn't dictate your self worth. Um, that's where a lot of guys get stuck at. Is that their heartbreak is their self worth. Cause, because you're putting this girl on, on a pedestal, like I, mm -hmm. I'm, you're thinking I'm not going to get another girl like her. You're right, you're never going to get another girl like her. But the thing is, you get to be open to the possibility that you might find a girl better than her. 
or find a girl just as good as her but in different ways um, right now you're in pain because you're limited by your options if you had five other girls lined up that were just as good as her or or even better than her the heartbreak um, goes away a lot quicker so number one acknowledge it know that it's only temporary and it doesn't dictate your self-worth and number three put in the work get out there and build that inventory of girls right right well first of all you know it just goes to show you that even if you are living the quote-unquote playboy lifestyle that you can still fall in love and get your heart broken right we are we are built as human beings to to meet and to connect with people um, emotionally so just because you might be a quote quote pick up artist or whatnot you know we, we fall in love and th that happens um, he talked about a really good way of just acknowledging it and me and my scientific uh, mind and the very analytical part of me like it's sort of like drug withdrawal like literally if you just look at a physiological component breaking up you know when you're in love like your brain isn't getting those endorphins and, and the oxytocin and, and all that all those drugs that you were receiving when you were in a relationship so I always suggest to guys like do things that make them act up don't stay home and, and like be miserable I mean sure maybe spend a weekend getting drunk whatever but then like work out use the depression the anger the sadness the resentment whatever it is and use that to get yourself like testosterone and, and, and adrenaline and like I said meet new girls because when you're meeting new girls you're not going through that withdrawal because now you're having the, the pleasure of someone's company even if it's not for sex it's just like the pleasure of other people's company exactly. right yeah. all right so hopefully that, that helped out uh, John's question no um, Joseph had a question about how to start a threesome. I think we'll just leave that to Jeff. Like, you gotta sign up for Jeff's program. He, he's an expert. Like, I think at this point, he's got his primary girlfriend where, you know, she's like lesbian and she can sleep with girls and he can sleep with girls and she can't sleep with guys and they got to pick up girls together. Yes. And I think he's got like another secondary mistress. <laughs> right? So he, he's beyond threesome. He's like got foursomes and fivesomes at this point. Um, so check out, check out Jeff Kahn. And, oh, here's a good one. How do you be happy uh, while you're being single? What are you talking about? When you're single, <laughs> yeah, that's where you're the happiest. Um, just play the field, you know. Um, be open to experimenting, you know. Meet as many girls as you can because throughout your journey in, in, as a single guy, you have so much freedom, so many options, and there's so much for you to explore. And through that journey, you can find out what you truly truly like um, at first you might think oh I'm just gonna bang all the hot girls There's nothing wrong with that but eventually uh, you start to filter out your options and figure out exactly archetype personality um, even her quirks her, her humor you figure out exactly what you want from a girl throughout that journey as a single guy which I think is beautiful yeah I think part of like you want to be happy with yourself before you can like try to make a girl make you happy, that right? Too, that it's, too, it's, it's yeah. not about that person making you happy because otherwise you're gonna be in this like kind of codependent relationship, right? Expected this other person to complete you. Like you gotta be like a, a well-formed, fully baked human being if, if you're gonna be in a happy relationship. So I think it is a good question. I think that you need to have a lifestyle that is full and fulfilling. Um, like to be honest, like I'm an introvert by nature. Like, I can get up on stage, and I can do my thing, and I can, you know, talk to women, but it's something that I have developed and I can turn on, but the reality is I enjoy my alone time, even when I'm with, like, even when I had, like, a super serious girlfriend, or I live with them, like, I just enjoy that alone time, and that's because, like, I'm cool with being me, right? I'm, I'm cool with, with whatever I'm doing, and maybe that's because I have certain kind of achievements in my life where I don't have to look to other people to make me happy whether it's hobbies or whether it's things you enjoy doing right but don't be that guy right that sort of ostracizes like everybody around him and just be be a loner like when I I choose to be alone because sometimes I just need to recharge 
right? It's a choice, and then I go out and I have fun and I meet people or hang out with my girls, right? But I, I, I have things that always give me some sense of fulfillment beyond just, like, being with women. Yeah, last thing you want to do is seek happiness and validation and approval from women. Right, right. It's, exactly. it's like what um, you get to ask yourself this question is, what else do I have going for me besides women? If you don't have anything, that's when it's like, okay, you got to sit down with yourself and figure out your own hobbies and your own purpose or whatever you think your purpose is in life. Yeah. Think of it this way. There's, there's internal validation, external validation, right? External validation is like, you know, you approach a girl and she responds really well or even if you sleep with her. Well, what happens when that external validation is gone, okay? Right? <laughs> then you just have internal validation. But if all your, your entire self-esteem is based off of other people, yeah. you're not going to be happy. No. So find ways to uh, generate internal confidence and happiness. All right. Peter, thanks for that question. Again, remember guys, stay tuned to the very end. Um, we'll pro probably originally meant to be like 30 minutes, but we started a little bit late, so probably go over like 40, 45 minutes. Um, so stay tuned to the, to the end, and there's a cool little bonus. I mean, you know, the alumni already know about it, but be sure to stay. Uh, Sharma has a question, interesting question. Um, how can I get a girl to wing me at a bar? That's pretty specific. <laughs> I was like, it's interesting, so that's why I chose it. I mean, what do you, what do you think? I mean, um, I've seen a few instances of this actually happening at my mm -hmm. club. Um, number one, the girl that you want to become your wing, be friends with her first. Just befriend her. And once you befriend her, joke around and be like, hey, there's a really cute girl over there. What do you think I should say to her? You know, and then have her play along with it. Be like, oh, you should tell her she's cute, whatever, whatever. And, I'll li and I've literally, literally seen this. The guy will just grab the girl and be like, yeah, let's go. Let's go talk to her. <laughs> literally, after befriending her. Um, that's one strategy. And, of course, um, have a female friend that you already know do it with you. Like a pre-planned pre kind of thing. Yeah. Right, right. Um... What I've done before is you obviously have to have the confidence to approach her, to engage this whatever group of women or a single woman, and if you want to make her your wing, what I've done is, uh, like, you can either play, like, fuck, marry, kill, or, like, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I, I love observing people around us, and then everybody does it, like, all the girls that they like to examine, and I say, like, oh, we'll be, like, Jane Goodall and, like, Gorillas of the Mess and see all these people and their, their, you know, mating habits, right? Um, and we'll, you know, we'll make fun of people or we'll just kind of like uh, judge them or like make stories about them. And then what we'll do, to do is like, you know, what guy here would you like to meet? I'll introduce you to him and then you do me the reverse favor. Oh, that right? works. Yeah, yeah that I've, works. I've done that. Yeah. So, that you know, you be her wingman and then she'll be your wing girl, right? So I've done that. Um, so Pete has a question. I need to ground myself. I've read too much empower, quote unquote, empowering info that had me acting silly. I don't know if it's really <laughs> empowering or it made you act silly, but okay. Um, how do I get like mature development of character and self esteem? Like, you've gone through this evolution and you're just still currently going through this evolution because we're humans and we're constantly evolving. What do you what do you say um, when it comes to like when you're younger and you're reading stuff that seems like really cool like you're you're typing up in YouTube like oh holy shit that's so funny and then you do it and like you realize you're a jackass yeah so <laughs> number one um, this is more of an inner game kind of question mm -hmm. uh, when you read these quote unquote empowerment books yes you read them but it's also important to understand the reasoning behind it. Not just doing the, them the blindly. Yeah, understand the principle uh, as to why this technique or this thought even exists in the first place. And remember, these books are just, they set a, found, like, they set a baseline, a foundation for your, for your inner game or your empowerment. So you can, like, you still got to make sure that 
you figure out a way where it caters to your personality okay um so basically be able to use it but use it authentically where you are still you where you are not the book and you are still you hopefully that answers the question yeah 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 um you know there's, there's a problem in any community any any self-help uh, community with keyboard jockeys, right? And people have a tendency to go online and, and type in like things that look cool, especially in, in the, the dating or the pickup. And they'll, they'll see things that they think is cool, right. right? But here's the problem. Like you can watch a Bruce Lee movie a thousand times. Doesn't mean you know Kung Fu, okay? Yeah. And a lot of these things are, they're, they're meant to get and cause a reaction without a context of being something that improves your skill. So you watch like a viral video of like something that seems really cool, picking up a girl, and you know, you think, I'll try it out, but the reality is it was just a joke. It really wasn't meant to improve like your inner game or your verbal game or your outer game. Like it, it just entertains you and, and you know, it's just something to be aware of. Okay? Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> That's my dog. Buddy um and so just just understand the context and the principle of of what you're learning and then decide how do i apply it into my life okay um all right lee eh, okay lee asks about his relationship um why is my girlfriend having less sex with me uh, is she cheating or what damn um it can be, right, if you're, if you're dating someone and, and, and sex seems to be dying, it's not a guarantee, obviously, but they do say, like, the three primary reasons for divorce in a marriage is, is like, um, the lack of sex, uh, the lack of communication, and financial issues, right? And so, it could be just simply a matter of stress, there could be a lot of things going on in her life, um, it could be that you're just not performing very well, right? And it's just not enjoyable for her. So maybe you got to step up your game, right? You got to step up your sex game. Um, so if it's just a matter of like, you know, a few days, you know, that's fine. But if it's ongoing, like months and months, yeah. year, then you probably do need to do a pulse check and actually have it sit down an emotional, like, you know, uh, sit down with her and ask, like, the state of your relationship. And, like, open up and say, like, you're concerned, like, you, you love her or whatever, and you want to know what's going on, and hopefully you have that kind of, like, uh, open relationship of communication. Didn't, uh, doesn't William, do, uh, William's our long-term coach, uh, long-term marriage and dating coach, yeah. um, doesn't he, like, still run the phases? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That like William in both his long-term relationships as well as his marriages, uh, marriage single, <laughs> he uses the A B C D F system and like he still is sure to create attraction because he doesn't take her for granted. You know, make sure she has a good time, uh, make sure that he has a, like a deep level of, uh, emotional connection, but he's also dominant and in yep. control, mm -hmm. right? And and that's something that you can also apply. And he, he teaches that like the marriage module as part of a long term training. Um, we'll answer a couple more questions. Uh, we got a lot here. And again, stay tuned to the end. Like I said, we'll give a little bit of bonus. Uh, some of you guys are probably already familiar with it if you're like alumni. But for those of you who are just tuning in, it's something really cool. So stay tuned to the end. All right. Um, all right, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. What's up? Uh, Chuck was part of our immersion program um, from last year. It, Chuck asks, how do I figure out a smooth transition from my story to another story? Like, how do I, you know, DHB demonstrate high value without feeling forced? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you transition? Oh, man. Um, it depends. If it's for banter, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You don't need a smooth transition if it's banter, because that the point of banter is just to make her laugh. If you make her laugh, she's going to forget about how sloppy your transition was. Um, but if it comes to DHVs, um, 
you want to have what I used to do when I first started is to have pre-written stories in mind, like canned stories. So if you brain fart or you blank, you can always revert to those stories. Right. I think, you know, key to what he was saying is there, there are two things. It is essentially having a strong enough frame and then using laughter as your actual transition or your pivot point. If you make her laugh, it literally does not matter. Like you were talking about, I don't know, whatever, you know, fishing, and then all of a sudden you're talking about being an astronaut. Like, you know, if, if, if you make her laugh, it literally does not matter. The idea is, like, if you are comfortable with yourself, if you are comfortable with talking about what you want to talk about, that comfort will go to her. Right between the laughter and your own comfort level, that's like the grease, right? That 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 makes it so that it transitions really smoothly. And so you've got to be completely secure in what you're saying. And you know, obviously, if you need something, just make a laugh, yeah. right? I had a student that would just like, I think like, I don't know how to transition from the opener. And like when I was just talking to him one on one, guy to guy, you know, we got on this topic of like what kind of superheroes we like, Marvel versus DC. Like, I'm a Marvel fan, Spider-Man and X-Men as a kid, right? He was DC, Batman, Superman. And we kind of got into this really in-depth discussion. I was like, dude, that's how you got to talk. It's like, he was so comfortable, but it's like, just transition. Yeah. And if you're comfortable and you make a laugh, it literally will not matter. And then he, he was like, really? And he tried that out and it worked, okay? So it's about you being comfortable with whatever you're saying. And then, you know, having enough laughter, like a little bit of a, uh, of a laugh track, soundtrack, where she's enjoying it and it does not matter, right? It doesn't seem like super obvious. Um, and then here's another one. Uh, messing you, you, Tommy uh, says, messing you because I wanted um, to know how to start a conversation and provide like topics to discuss. So a little bit even even more beginner level from Chuck's question, who was transitioning from conversation. So like, doesn't even know how to start one. Okay, so uh, number, if when it comes to conversational topics with girls, um, my favorite three is fashion, food, and travel. Mm -hmm. uh, all girls love either a minimum, at least one of these topics. So when it comes to conversations, uh, number one, obviously use your opener, whatever, uh, direct, indirect, whatever it is. And I like, I personally like to use a cold read. Um, so for example, I'll tell the girl, hey, you look like you travel a lot. And then go from there. Whether she says yes or no, it doesn't matter. Yes, I, if she says yes, I travel a lot, you say awesome. I. I travel. I've been to X, Y, Z. You can talk about yourself. That's when you. That's when JT said earlier. Be comfortable about talking about yourself. If she says no, I don't travel a lot. You can be like, really? Uh, you look like someone that travels a lot. You know, you can build that conversation accordingly um, based on those topics. Yeah, I think it's important to do like a self inventory where you examine your life. You know, I know it's the age of thing being like humble and you know not speaking up, but like take an inventory of yourself. Take a, like ask yourself what I've done in life, what are my values, what adventures or funny things that you know I've I've done, you know I've seen, I've been part of, and then use that to connect with other people to to thread in conversation. Yes, interesting stories always work. Yeah, and also realize this, especially in the nighttime, but in general when you're talking. Um, and on an emotional level, logic and, and linear connections don't matter, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm an engineer, I think of like A, B, C, D, E, F, like literally that's the ABCs of attraction, right? It's like A, B, C, D, F. And, but when you're talking emotionally, when you're talking in a social environment, when you're flirting, it is not that kind of like that, that one, two, three sequence. Like conversational threads were just going to completely random places. And again, going back to the question that we answered for Chuck, you know, be comfortable with saying whatever you want to say and make a laugh and it doesn't matter how you transition right so take an inventory of yourself take an inventory of your life and discuss that like be willing to talk about yourself because she's not going to be willing to talk about herself until you open up exactly. like you must be the generous person first so you open up okay guys um it's about like 12 40 
uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know there are a lot of questions. Um, we try to answer as many as we could that are popping up. So, uh, you know, we're going to try this again uh, soon in the future, hopefully. This is my first time doing Facebook Live, so, you know, there are probably a little bit of mistakes. Uh, I started late. My apologies. Oh, and again, um, if this advice resonated with you, private message me, because for those of you who are in attendance here, you will get a free uh, fast action pricing on my next Los Angeles boot camp, okay? Those of you who are interested, if you got some value out of this, all right, this is just scratching the surface, you know, our boot camps are, quite frankly, I know I'm tuning my own horn, like the envy of the industry, where not only have I been teaching in the past 10 years, like the last two years, we haven't had a single customer request a refund. We're literally 100% uh, client satisfaction, right? And, you know, Sebastian here is literally one of our long-term students who took the boot camp and decided to like, hey, I want to get even better, and he tripled his results. I mean, if you want to talk just a little, really quickly for these guys? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, for those of you that uh, are wondering if you should take the boot camp, um, it caters to all levels whether you're a beginner or intermediate or even advanced. Uh, I came in at an intermediate level. And what JT did for me um, in terms of boot camp and long-term training is that he modified um, my pickup style to where it's for me, specifically for me. Um, he fine-tuned my pickup game. And after that, my results just like skyrocketed so um, and for beginners um, I definitely recommend this boot camp um, especially if you're just how should I say um, if you're just trying to um, check it out and trying to build the foundation for pickup and um, having and having the women that you want in your life uh, definitely give this a go um, and you'll be surprised. You might even be surprised at yourself at what you can do. Because um, I've, I've seen newcomers come in and be like, holy shit, I can do that? I can pick up a girl? So, yeah, that's yeah. my advice. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Sebastian. Yeah. yeah, like I said, if this resonated with you, if any of our advice uh, helped you, just private message me, and I will give for each and every single one of our audience members here at this Facebook Live a fast action special pricing for the upcoming Los Angeles boot camp. Okay guys? Oh, and the bonus, alright? If you guys go to abcsofattraction.com slash quiz, you will go to a uh, the sexual market dating value quiz because if you've ever been curious at all as to whether or not women find you attractive and how much you know, it's like, am I hot or am I not? The reality this, check. <laughs> yeah. This will give me the score, check. right? I was talking to a student, and he was like, you know, I, th I think I'm okay. I'm like, well, how do women react to you? I was like, well, I keep on getting blown out really fast. And as I talked about, you know, asked him about his fashion. It's like, oh, I don't care about, like, fashion. I'm like, okay, you know, take the quiz, tell me what the score is. And he's like, a negative eight. I'm like, <laughs> that's why you're getting blown out, because your sexual market value is so low. All right, guys? Like, yeah, you can get so good at pickup that you don't have to care about, you know, any kind of, like, nonverbal passive value. But if you have, like, a really good passive value, it makes life so much easier. And that way you don't have to just, like, concentrate on a verbal game, right? Like, who are you trying to prove? Like, are you trying to, like, impress other guys? No, you're trying to get girls, you're trying to get relationships, sex, whatever it is. You're not trying to prove, like, you're like, oh, I'm a great big up artist, so I'm going to dress up in, like, board shorts and a tank oh, top and, like, you know, only plow. You know. So take the sexual market dating value uh, test, and it'll give you a pretty accurate score, at least in my opinion. This is the soft skill, all right? And it, it, the scale is negative 30 to 30, all right? Um, again, that is abcsofattraction.com slash quiz, and I'll type it in the description later. Um... If you guys enjoyed this, please share this with one of your best, you know, homies um, that you think, you know, could do a little bit of help. 
uh, that, you know, themselves are on the same, like, journey that we are, and that you are. Please like and share, and let me know if you, if this helps, and if you want to submit more questions, okay, I, we hit, like, a dozen in the last 30 minutes, right, and there were even more. People were typing in, but we can only get to so much, so, um, any, any last words, Sebastian? Um, no, honestly, guys, um, know your self-worth. Don't sell yourself short. Um, I mean, as, as Asian guys, we, we got to step up, you know, we, like, it, just think about how you want your kids to live their life when they start having a dating life or a non-existent dating life. How are you as a father going to step up for them or not even, uh, or not even for your kids if you don't plan on having any, but for all your other Asian brethren. Okay, guys. Again, remember, message me for if you're interested in the boot camp experience, as well as check out the bonus quiz to get your score, abcsofattraction.com slash quiz. Thanks, guys, and bye. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.